Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Eddie Day, Princeton, West Virginia. Um, I had a, several dreams at the beginning of the year and God spoke to me and uh, I need to get this out. I feel like I'm not being very obedient by holding on to this. I don't like to scare people and uh, I like to keep people in faith. I'm a big faith guy and and uh, we either walk in faith or we walk in fear. So I try to promote faith and I try to keep people's head on straight. But the Lord got on to me in his loving way and told me I needed to make this clear. So let me tell you that I'm a pastor of the bridge here in Princeton, West Virginia for about 14 years. And I uh, also done a lot of evangelism. My wife and I have traveled for over 35 years. So we've been heavy in ministry and we've been fortunate to see some amazing things, healings, and and uh, God has spoke to us about different things over the years. Before I tell you these dreams, I want to say that I understand clearly that God will always speak through prophetic people to inform, to prepare, uh, to let us know what's going on. And he gives each one of us a little part. And there's a lot of prophetic people right now that are online that are given their parts and the Lord said you need to give yours I said okay I'll do it I, I repented because I should have done this before but uh, he puts those pieces together from all of us and helps us understand some things that's happening right now and I want to humbly tell you that I don't think highly of myself as all that a great prophet but over the years God has allowed us to flow in those gifts and anointings We've seen amazing miracles, just amazing healings, and uh, we've seen angels um, manifest in different things that God has shown us over the years. I want to tell you, the first thing that's happened, uh, several years ago, I had a dream that uh, my wife and I were in an apartment somewhere, and I heard a noise, like a break-in. And being the hillbilly that I am, and the pro-gun guy that I am, in my dream, I told my wife, I said, uh, get my pistol, get my pistol. So she brought me the gun and I walked to the basement door of where I heard this noise and I looked under the door and I seen soldier boots lining up down the steps like they were getting ready to break the door down. And I woke up and uh, I'm very passionate, I want to tell you, so I'll probably cry. But uh, my wife told me that real men cry. But it's just the power. I just feel God's presence. But uh, I knew that that meant something. Other people had dreams that uh, people were looking for me. And one man had a suit on asking for Eddie Day. But underneath his suit, he had camouflage. And she's seen it. Dreams like that, people were telling me. So I was preparing and putting all this together. I also had dreams of many people in our front yard. I mean, hundreds of people, and I was putting them in line, in, a, in an order. If you stand here, you look out this way, you watch down this way, it's coming from this way. And uh, they were police officers, there were firemen, there were everyday folks, you know, uh, all walks of life. And we were putting them in order and, and putting them in ranks and uh, had a lot of dreams like that. The next thing that's very significant, my wife had a dream uh, several years ago, seven years ago. We have a, and um, she dreamed that we played in a band and we played music all of our lives and that's part of our ministry. We played in a band called Five Till Midnight. Midnight was the end of everything. Um, you know, the Bible talks about the bridegroom comes at midnight. So we knew that that dream was very uh, prophetic and that God was speaking to us. So it meant so much to us, we named our band at that time, Five to Midnight. And we always talked about it. It's getting close to the time, you know. It's, time's running out, we gotta get busy. Several years later, maybe two years later, um, we have a grandfather clock in our house that has a battery, and that battery runs down, the clock stops. So every once in a while, we have to go around and, and put this battery in. The clock stopped at exactly three minutes till midnight. 
and we took a picture of it. Murray said, Eddie, look at the clock, you know? And I said, wow. So five to midnight, years later, it was down to three to midnight. And we, we just, it was a big deal. And we knew that God was telling us, I'm coming. And you need to, you need to get busy and keep doing what you're doing. Time is winding down. So this year, um, right before the beginning of this year, the clock stopped again. It's been probably two or three years. And it stopped directly on midnight. I mean, it couldn't have got any closer, either left or right. And Murray said, Eddie, look at the clock. And I walked in the living room, and it was on midnight. It could have stopped at three minutes after one, six minutes after two. You know, it could have stopped anywhere on that dial, hundreds of places. But it stopped there. And we knew that that meant something. Well, after the first of the year, all this stuff started happening with the viruses and with uh, lockdowns and quarantines. So we've really put it together and understood that that's something that's happening. At the beginning of this year, God woke me up the first day of the first part of the year at 4.30 a.m., January 1st at 4.30 a.m. And I was reading and studying the Word, and the Lord told me to write some things down. And... Uh, like I said, I hesitated to show this to a lot of people because I don't like to scare people. But the Lord told me that uh, we walk in faith. We don't walk in fear. And I need to get that out. All through this, God has been saying one thing to me, and I'm going to keep saying it to you. You are not alone, ever. He is with us, always. His word, his, his anointing, his angels of God are encamped round about us. We can't fall into fear. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And I'm not going to let my mind run wild through this, and I'm not going to fall into fear. Fear is an enemy. Fear has torment. So we're going to walk in faith. Right now in your life, I say this to my people a lot, you're either walking in faith or you're walking in fear. And if you are in fear, you're going to be tormented. Fear has torment. So we're going to stay in faith. The Lord reminded me that day, first day of this year, about the dreams. And one of those dreams that I had, I have to tell you, this happened in December, I think. It was right before the beginning of the year. I had a three-part dream, and I've had many dreams, but this one really... I knew that it was the Lord speaking to me. I didn't understand it as much. In my dream, my wife and I were in a restaurant eating. And at the end of the meal, we came up and I handed the guy my credit card to pay for the meal. And he run it through and he said, uh, this card is no good. I said, sure it is. You know, I know it is. I said, we'll try this one. And I gave him another one. And he swiped it and he said, sir, this card's no good either. And I said, well, I know I have money in my accounts. You know, I know that it's good. And over to my right, there was another man arguing with the manager over the same thing. And then I noticed all through the restaurant, people were getting up and arguing with different waiters. And, and the manager said, just give me a minute. Let me make a phone call. So this guy goes over to a phone. And I'm real passionate, y'all. So if I start crying, it's just presence of God. But he went over to the phone and... Uh, he made this call and he looked at me and his face kind of dropped and he mouthed these words to me. He said, financial collapse. Financial collapse. And then I went from that part of the dream over to another part. And I actually went in the house of someone that uh, a friend of mine and uh, they said, you got a lot of nerve coming in here. I said, excuse me? They said, get out of my house. You know, they run me off. And I, I went out and I thought, what are they doing? It was so real. And I, I stuck my head back in. I said, what's wrong with y'all? You know, I don't know what's going on. What you, what you upset about? You have a lot of nerve coming in here after what you did. And I said, what did I do? All of her accounts were under where they're supposed to be. She lost all of her money. And this lady had got some money. 
in a in a uh, uh, death in the family, and she was angry at me because she thought that I had done it, and she said all of her money was gone out of her accounts, and um, I went to a third part of the dream, and I was in my hometown here in West Virginia, and I was walking along some storefronts here, and they were abandoned, tables were turned over, dirty. Um, no one had been in those stores for a while, but underneath the tables, people were hiding and they knew me and, um, the guys that came out, they said, there's Eddie day, you know, and they called me Edward day. And that's where I grew up here. That's what they called me. So I knew it was here and they came out and they had weapons. They had ball bats and chains and tire tools and knives and, uh, they were living and scared underneath those tables. They were looking around and I was talking to them. The one thing that stood out to me more than anything in that part of the dream is no one had a gun. There was no guns. So I always took that as, uh, as something that God was trying to show us too. Those are the dreams that I had that are, and the things that God has showed us that is very significant. I want to say this. After the dreams, I was a bit shaken and my mind began racing with all these questions and concerns that we all have. My wife, my children, my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, you know, I, he would correct me quickly. The Lord did. And he said, no fear, no fear. He said, you are never alone, son, never alone. And he kept saying that to me. I said, yes, sir. I understand God. I'm haven't I always taken care of you and yours, he said. Haven't we always? We've been through some things together. I said, yes, sir. And he said, this will be no different. I'll take care of you. You are never alone. I'm going to be saying that a lot because he said that to me a lot. I said, then we must prepare. In my mind, my hillbilly mind, you know, let's get ready for this. You know, let's. And quickly he spoke to me and he said, you can't prepare for what's coming. Son, walk in faith, not fear. And again, he calmed me. You are never alone. So I, I, I'll need to make this clear that I, I do believe in light preparation. I do believe that God don't mind us having a few extra things and nothing like that. I just was thinking, let's get a cave somewhere and fill it full of food and you know and some people do and that's you need to work that out with you but i was in fear as i began seeing this i understand it was okay to look ahead like i said make some sensible preparations and decisions but we just can't let fear torment us second timothy 1 7 says god's that god didn't give us that not a spirit of fear but love power and a sound mind so we're going to be walking in faith Faith is sensible, it's practical, it's peaceful in our emotions. Fear will whittle on you. It will whittle you down and it will cause you to miserably fail in the end. I need you to say this to yourself. We are never alone. During this horrible time, y'all, God spoke to me that, the, that I believe is coming. Um, we will see supernatural manifestations of angels just like they did in the Old Testament, just like they did in the book of Acts. When the angel came and got Peter out of jail, opened the door and let him out. When Paul and Silas shook the prison and all the doors opened, we are never alone and we'll see those miracles and we'll see these things happen. During this time, there will be supernatural miracles like the fish and the bread and uh, being multiplied. Everything that we just need to understand that God is with us and it's going to be okay. Um, I'm going to read you what I wrote down and I'll, this will be the end. I wrote this down on the first day of the first part of the year at 4.30 a.m. God said, remember, remember the dream that you dreamed, financial collapse. Remember the soldiers. I wrote that down. Food shortages. Government cheese food and government water. Years ago, there was cheese lines here and they would give away the cheese and they would give away milk and they would give them. And I seen all that. 
But after I seen this, I seen poison. It's not good. And uh, there's a lot of people going to be giving away food and things that's not going to be healthy. You have to really be careful what we eat and what we take from people. Trouble will come with gradually increasing intensity and frequency of occurrence. It will come with gradually increasing intensity and frequency of occurrence, like labor contractions of childbirth. Sorrow, distress, and anguish. T-R-O-U-B-L-E. God, when I heard that, I heard the old song that we used to sing years ago when I was playing bars. I smelled T-R-O-U-B-L-E. That was playing, and I wrote it down. Not just called to talk about end times, but to live and lead in them. Shaken awake, sobered by seriousness, lead in his wisdom. You have my heart. I prepared you for this time. That's it. And um, I want to encourage you, and we'll say this again. We are never alone. In anything that happens, God is with us. And as trouble gets turned up, so does the anointing of God. And so does God's miracles. You're going to see, and we're going to see some amazing miracles through this time. Um, stay close to God. Get tuned in to him. He'll tell you what to do and how to do it. Don't allow yourself to fall into fear. You'll be a miserable human being. There's a scripture in Revelations that talks about the people that he's seen in the lake of fire. It talks about the fearful and it has the murderers, and it has the men stealers, and it has the drunkards, people. But that word fearful was the first one on the list, and I looked it up, and it meant faithless in the original Greek. Faithless. The fearful, the unbelieving, they were all in that, in that torment. And that's what the word meant, faithless. So don't ever fall into that fear and let it torment your mind stay with god everything's going to be okay start praying and seeking the lord and uh thank you all for your time god bless you